Breaking up can be hard, but eventually you learn to move on. People all around the world are breaking up with fiat, but the IMF really isn't taking the hint. They are trying to make fiat currencies sexy again by making them more stable. Oh, Ms. Lagarde, we are just not that into you. Maybe you missed it, but the Bitcoin white paper was a Dear John letter addressed to fiat. But take nothing for granted, people. Bulls need to capitalize on the 7500 price and hope for a rally, avoiding the risk of another dip below 7000 Here is your overview of the week. Blockshow Europe 2018 kicked off this week with a keynote from Wikipedia co-founder Jimmy Wales. He thinks cryptocurrency and blockchain are in a bubble. He went on to say, this is a space where we're in serious need of real journalism. Cointelegraph at your service, Mr. Wales. The Chinese government shared Wales' gloomy outlook. They determined recently that the average lifespan of a blockchain project was just 15 months. Jimmy Wales is famous for more than just Wikipedia. He's also one of the few dot-com era success stories that did not become a billionaire. Well guys, if we can convince him to be a bit more bullish on Bitcoin, Jimmy Wales could become a crypto whale and finally become a billionaire. The Bank of England's Mark Carney isn't a fan of crypto, no surprise there. He does, however, remain open-minded about blockchain. In an interview this week, he said, is our role going to be changing the payment systems and helping private providers of digital money? Or will we be going all the way to a central bank issued digital currency? He went on. This is one of the most exciting and important areas, and certainly the most important area to get right. It is encouraging that he is on board with blockchain, but Mr. Carney fails to see that what makes crypto so important and exciting is the fact that it is not issued by a central bank. The crypto circus has not yet recruited this Carney, but it seems he already has a ticket to the blockchain show. Chiu 360, China's largest internet security company, found several high-risk security vulnerabilities in EOS's blockchain platform. The vulnerabilities would allow an attacker to use a smart contract with malicious code to open a security hole, and then use the super node to enter the malicious smart contract into a new block, thus putting all network nodes under the attacker's control. EOS asked 360 not to report the vulnerability, and then they claimed the vulnerabilities had been fixed on the same day. Phew. 360 believes that these new series of unprecedented security risks could affect other blockchain platforms. EOS, whose mainnet is scheduled to launch on June 2nd, fell by almost 3% following the news. In other news, China's fashion police would like to bring the pirate who dresses former EOS CSO Brock Pierce in for questioning. Over to Scotland now, which has become home to the world's first crypto clinic. A Scottish hospital is treating people who are addicted to trading crypto. The Castle Craig Hospital in Peeblesshire has created a course of residential treatment for those considered crypto addicts. Experts say that crypto trading can become a form of behavioral addiction with traders fixated on market fluctuations. The treatment is similar to treatment for gambling addictions. This is no joke. Last year, Cointelegraph reported on a Bitcoin investor who used his home as collateral for a $325,000 equity loan in pursuit of making a midterm profit on Bitcoin. But some in the UK think the gambling comparison could work in a hodler's favor. Declaring your crypto as gambling could help them avoid taxes. After all, there are worse things than gambling, like drugs or Brock Pierce. Donald Trump may be failing to make America great again, but South Korean officials are trying to make ICOs legal again. A National Assembly committee dedicated to studying the so-called Fourth Industrial Revolution said it would seek to enhance the legal basis of cryptocurrency in the country, part of which would be reversing the ICO ban. Seoul's decision to ban ICOs had met with considerable backlash, resulting in mass protests and calls for senior government ministers to resign in January this year. After K-pop sensation BTS became the first Korean band to top the Billboard 100, it's time for some real crypto love. No more fake love, South Korea. Take a love, take a love. After reportedly charging $105,000 per tweet to promote crypto, John McAfee is back. This time, he is releasing his own fiat currency backed by crypto, which is not a hoax as previously reported. The McAfee Redemption Unit is real and coming in June. McAfee Redemption Units will be connected to a blockchain by tokens and can be redeemed for up to 100 minutes of personal time with the eccentric crypto advocate. To redeem these tokens for a personal meeting, you must appear at an address in Mexico between the hours of 1 p.m. and 3 p.m., where you will then receive a date, time, and location somewhere in the world to meet McAfee. 
Redemption is purposefully made very expensive. His fans, he believes, are willing to spend considerable time and money in order to meet him. Using some sort of McAfee economics, he predicts that the note will skyrocket if the value is linked to the cost of redemption. A currency backed by crypto? The opposite of what banks are doing? Mind blown! This guy can do anything. He could get away with murder. Allegedly. Like and subscribe to never meet John McAfee. Like, subscribe, and hodl for our new app. Know the precise location of McAfee so you can be literally anywhere else.